today I want to cover some of the main mistakes that I see people making when drawing with graphite pencils, specifically when trying to draw realistic items with graphite pencils. So let's cover the main do's and don'ts. And then at the end, I can show you the full process that I always use. I always follow the same steps. So let's get straight into it. And I'm gonna try and work in kind of chronological order. So the most important thing that you're going to need first, if you're trying to draw specifically realistic items, is a reference photo. It is going to be 10 times easier to draw something realistic if you are working from a reference. Generally speaking, nature is pretty random and it's hard to be that random. Thinking of all of the kind of intricacies of shadows and lighting, it's gonna be very hard to realistically draw that just from your mind. So when it comes to picking the reference photo, the main thing that I see people doing wrong is picking a bad reference photo. Don't pick a reference that doesn't have good contrast. Honestly, contrast is the most important part of drawing with graphite because you haven't got any color to kind of distract from the contrast. That's all you've got. And if you pick a reference photo like this one, it's never gonna create a very interesting or rich drawing. Even if you drew it perfectly like the reference, it's not gonna be the same as if you pick a reference like this one, which has some really amazing lights and some really amazing darks. Next up, and probably the main thing that I see people doing wrong is getting the proportions wrong. So you don't want to rush your sketch. If your proportions are wrong on the drawing, the whole thing is never gonna look right. You could create the most amazing shading, but it would still not look realistic. So as I say, you don't want to rush it. What I always like to do is create my sketch outlines and get my proportions right by using what's called the grid method. This is where you make a grid on your reference photo and a grid on your drawing paper, and you just draw what's in each individual square. Then at the end, you erase all the lines and you're left with a in proportion sketch. It is well worth taking the time to do this. So now with this drawing, we've got a reference photo and we've got sketch outlines. I can cover the next very important don't. Now, as I mentioned, contrast is absolutely key when drawing with graphite, but that doesn't mean that you can expect to create epic contrast immediately. You don't want to go in too hard with the pencil. If you just press really hard with the pencil, trying to get some really dark darks, you're just gonna essentially be scribbling. It's not gonna be very forgiving. If you make a mistake, you've really committed to it and you're not gonna be able to build up the pencil in the way that you should. So what you want to do is gradually build up the pencil in a series of light layers. You want to be pressing really nice and lightly so that you are able to build up a lot of pencil. Now in terms of pressing lightly with the pencil, there are a few things that you're going to want to do here. And this leads me into my next point quite nicely. You don't want to have a blunt pencil. If you have a blunt pencil, you're going to have to press harder than you otherwise would to get the same amount of graphite on the paper. If you have a nice and sharp pencil, pressing lightly will be much easier and you'll build up more pencil, but still be able to get more over the top. Now I've mentioned a few times about layering the pencil, about building it up. What you don't want to do is stick with just one type of pencil. So graphite pencils come in a variety of different hardnesses. You want to use a few different of these types of pencils so that you're able to build up all of the richness. I did a little experiment a while ago where I drew one circle with just one, just the hardest pencil. And then I created another sphere with a few different pencils. And you can see how much richer that looks. And that, again, brings me into another don't. Don't forget to blend. Now, because we're building up different layers of pencil, I don't want to just put one on top of another. Every time that I finish a pencil, so finish with the HB pencil, for example, I just take a tissue, wrap it around my finger, and basically smudge it. This kind of pushes the pencil into the paper, and it also smooths everything out. I can then build the next pencil on top, and then blend again. And again, I 
find that you get a much smoother, more consistent layer of pencil this way. Now you don't have to blend with the tissue. I do always blend with the tissue, but you could use something like a blending stump. Now, once you've built up all of your different layers of pencils, you don't want to stop there. Don't leave the light areas. Now it's very rare that I see people adding the light areas back in because we've blended so much and we've built up so much pencil areas that maybe we wanted to leave the white of the paper aren't white anymore. What I always do is take a couple of erasers, usually a putty eraser and an electric eraser and add those light areas back in. And this is all part of increasing the contrast. As I said, the contrast is absolutely key. And in order to have great contrast, I need really good light lights and really dark darks but I'm missing those light areas. And then my last don't is don't leave it without the absolute blacks. Now in my drawing here, for example, as I say, there are some very light lights and some very dark darks. My dark areas primarily on the pot are actually pretty much black, but what I have on the drawing right now is not pretty much black. Rather than just leaving it at this point, I want to carry on building up my darkest, my softest pencil and really get those dark values use looking as dark as I can. That is once again increasing the contrast on the drawing and really giving it that extra pop. Now here's a little bonus tip for you. If you're using standard graphite, you'll notice that it gets a bit reflective when you build up a lot of the pencil. And that kind of detracts from the very dark color that we're trying to create. Now for my drawing here, I'm using something called matte graphite, which are a lot less reflective. So that helps me really create those darkest darks. Now when in the past I've used standard graphite, if I've wanted it to look a little bit less reflective, if I wanted it to have really really dark blacks. I've gone over those darkest areas with a black colored pencil, something like a black polychromos pencil. I find that that works really well to just up that contrast. So basically my full process of drawing anything with graphite is to start out by selecting a really good reference photo with great contrast. I then want to take the time to get the sketch down, making sure that I've really got the proportions looking correct. I can then work my way through the different pencils Pencil, starting with the hardest pencil, so something like an HB, and gradually working my way towards the softer pencils, always making sure that I blend in between layers. Once I've got everything mapped out, I can then use a couple of different erasers to add in those lightest areas. And from here, I can tweak all of this, add in any final details, maybe adjust some shapes if it's looking a little bit wrong, and add in those absolute darkest areas. Now, if you want to go through this succulent with me in a lot more detail, I do have the full tutorial available on my Patreon. And I have not only this drawing, but a number of other graphite drawings, graphite and color pencil drawings. Every tutorial contains really in-depth instructions, all of the real-time footage, sketch outlines, details of all of the materials I've been using, as well as the reference photo. So do check out the link in the description. So hopefully that makes drawing with graphite pencils a little bit simpler. All right, happy drawing guys, and I'll see you in the next one.